we are going with our program. So now we have uh, uh, two short announcements. Yes, very short presentations. Uh, but uh, they will be just they will go like announcements. Um, Adam here. Uh, Adam Castle here. Is he? Okay. My name's Adam Castle. I'm the Web Services Manager at the RIPE NCC. Um, I'll go through these, uh, this lightning talk quite quickly. Uh, thanks to the ENOG PC for allowing me to talk here today. Um, and I'll be introducing to you the RIPE networking app. Um, quite simply, the RIPE networking app is a tool where you can connect and meet with a fellow attendees at this uh, ENOG 15. Uh, as Sergey mentioned, ENOG is also about networking. And this provides a, an easy way that you can connect to, with, with each other. The app works on both the desktop or laptop, uh, as uh, also Google and uh, iOS devices. You can also use the app to look at the agenda for Enog 15 as well. So, why do we have an app? Well, it was requested for at many meetings. We've now run this app uh, at the last two RIPE meetings. We had over 400 uh, users uh, uh, just in Marseille at RIPE 76. It was also requested at ENOG and our other uh, regional meetings that we help organize, for example, C. Um, the reason why it was requested is that um, attendees can also book meetings and send messages to fellow attendees before, during, and after the meeting. So if you come ahead of schedule, you can also meet uh, fellow attendees via the app. We also um, saw that a lot of our uh, attendees use both desktop and um, mobile devices. Most people bring at least two devices to each meeting. So we had to provide a solution that worked with both mobile and desktop devices. So how does it work? Um, hopefully it's quite simple. All you need is a RIPE NCC access account. You can go to uh, this URL, networking-app.ripe.net, and uh, you can use it via your desktop. Or you can go to the uh, Google Play Store or iTunes and download the app free of charge, of course, um, and you can just start using it immediately. I'll just uh, show you some screenshots of the app just to explain it a little bit to you. Uh, the first screen you see after you've logged in and you've gone through the intro screen is the agenda. Um, this is uh, an agenda that a screenshot was taken the other day, but it's actually uh, it's a live agenda, so it's been updated since then. Um, um, from this ad agenda, you can actually book slots, book meetings with yourself. You can book out time in your calendar so other people can book time with you. And once you start booking meetings, you can use this, um, this toggle here in the top right corner to flip between the agenda and your own agenda. By doing so, you can actually see the uh, presentations that will be throughout the meeting. On the second screen, the participant screen, you can see all users of the app. Um, there's another, the toggle again, which is in the top right-hand corner, can be used to see the actual people who have checked in on site. So these include non-app users. On this screen, you can search for a user by their name or by a tag or a company name that they might have associated with themselves with. And from this screen, you can book uh, meetings and send messages to each attendee. Um, so another thing you can do is set up your own profile. You only ever have to do it once, unless you want to change it, of course. Um, it takes your picture from your RIPE NCC Access account. Um, you can put in your company title, uh, your job title, sorry, or your company name. You can also put in tags. For example, I'm a Python developer, so I put in that I like py Python and open source. And so therefore, you can filter for this in the attendee list. I would like to note that if anyone's used the, the app, um, at RIPE76, you will need to log out of RIPE76 because it's still active for 30 days after the meeting. Like I said, people can uh, uh, network with each other through the app after the meeting and log back into Enog15. And this means that you get push, not push notifications for this day. So I just want to quickly say how it was built. 
we used open source software. Uh, it was built on uh, what's called Ionic, which is a JavaScript framework built in Angular, uh, which is on top of a hybrid uh, application software in the, from Apache called PhoneGap or Cordova. They, they've changed the name quite a few times. We used open source because it was there, it's free. Uh, also, there's a big community which we could help integrate with. Um, also, by doing so, we enabled that we could create a, a web browser variant and also two mobile variants, the iOS and the Android uh, apps. So it meant that we could deploy code really quickly. All the work was done by uh, RipeNC uh, Ripe developers in-house and it's hosted on our, on our network as well. So I just wanted to feed back a little bit because I know that some people are interested in building apps um, and just some things that we came across because it's nice to give back a little bit. First of all, um, the speed of development of mobile devices is crazy. You will start developing and within a week uh, there'll be a new feature or a library that you've used has gone out of date. Our recommendation is that you, com com you use continual integration building and then you can test every month if any library has changed or broken. And that means that you won't be uh, caught short when you need to go to a, a public production release. With, with apps and with mobile, um, with desktop uh, devices, you've got so many different platforms to support. So we decided to not support anything younger than KitKat and Android and iOS 6 uh, for the iOS app because it, it just made uh, um, everything a lot easier. Also, the footprint of the application was a lot smaller than when we did this, so therefore it doesn't take up too much memory or space on your device. Push notifications are pretty tricky. I recommend, well, we recommend using uh, an aggregate, aggregating software like OneSignal to do it for you. If you start writing code just for iOS or Android, you're going to have a massive application. And just a quick note, to get into different, the different stores takes um, different time as well. To get into a Google Play Store, once your app's ready, it takes about three hours. To get into the uh, iOS, the iTunes Store, it takes about three weeks. And that's because they do a lot of manual checks every night, which is, is good to know if you're about to schedule a deployment of an app. But once you're in the iTunes Store, you'll be able to update every single day after that. So. The app's there for you to use. We would love to hear your feedback. I don't think I've got too much time for questions, but um, I'm on site for the next two days, and we have Igor, who's waving over there, who's one of the uh, developers of the app, and we would love to hear your feedback, um, any kind of requests, any bugs that you might find. I've already heard there's uh, one bug that we've, we've already fixed or looked into, um, and also there was a request for statistics of who use, uh, how many people use the app afterwards, so we'll send those around after the meeting as well. So if you do have any questions, I think I'm out of time. So um, actually, we, we, have almost, uh, we have no, almost no time for questions. Okay. I, I will uh, read one question from the, from the uh, Telegram chat. Um, are you planning to, to add uh, the, the option to publish the presentation titles and author's name uh, in the application? Um, yeah, you can actually see it at the moment. If you click on each slot, you will see the presentation title, but you won't be able to go to the presentation itself. Like You won't be able to download the presentation. Uh, you have to click on the slot, and you will see the whole agenda for that slot. So Great. Thank you. Um, uh, thank you very much. I have a feature request. Please fix it that I don't have to log out and log in again for a new meeting or event. Yeah. Um, yeah, I understand that. that. We did that because of you might have got m multiple p push notifications for different events, so if you're still in Marseille, but, but I understand we'll take that back home and, and we'll look into that. Uh, and uh, one small feature request again. It's uh, good to meet each other via this application, but it's impossible to signal other par party if it doesn't have the application installed. So if it's possible to just send the mail for like an invitation to if you want to meet some somebody. So some in more integration with the people who join the conference. So that, that's needed for that. Yeah, thanks for that. That was also our biggest feedback from Marseille from the Ripe76. So we'll be looking into that as well. Now I have to, to close the mics. Yes, Thank you very much. Sir.